Uh, last week, I, I was out in Chico, and uh, when I lived in New York City, I graduated from college and know what the fuck I want to do in my life. I was an English major, and uh, this great guy who Dave and I both know named Joshua Mandel had this place up by Columbia where I was taking some writing courses uh, called Nacho Mama's Burritos. Not a very beer centric <laughs> name, but he was the guy, he was only a few years older than me, and I was like, oh man, this weird long haired dude can run a restaurant, maybe I can do it. And he turned me on to, to Chimay Red, to the Belgians oh, like last shoot, yeah, yeah. and Chris from the shoot is in the room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Celebration and celebration. Those those beers were the ones that made me say, "Wow, there's so much more than light lager out there." And I said, "Maybe I could do this. Maybe I could open a, a brewery." And so it really started in the city. I started home brewing and and, and had the confidence uh, from that experience to do it. And so to be come full circle back to Chico last week and actually <laughs> brew the first beer with uh, Ken that that in their third year amazing history. Uh, Sierra chose to do their first collaborative beer with me. Hey, Connor, uh, meant, meant so much to me. And the, 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 the beer's name is, is Life and Limb, and there's a, a, a session beer made from the second runnings of that mash called Limb and Life uh, that'll just be draft. But the Life and Limb is, was our way of, of sort of recognizing our whole community. So it, it's a beer that has a steak barley that was grown by the Grossman family out there in Chico, and then it has maple syrup that was grown, grown by, uh, or, or harvested by the Caligione, uh family up at our family farm in, in Western Mass, and that was sort of the, the limb part of it, two syrups from two different uh, branches of, of the Kraft uh, family tree. And it was really us celebrating the, the many, many diverse branches of this tree. There's the 1,500 small independent craft breweries that collectively have a 5% market share in America, that sucks. <laughs> but the, the, the poetic justice is the imports and the big three that are actually, you know, owned by by uh, you know foreign conglomerates are, are shrinking or staying the same size. And those five percent, the fifteen hundred people who I know you guys are going to go and support the events of this week, we're what's growing. And in a recession, it's anomaly to have a, a luxury item that's growing. But consumers, not just us hardcore beer folk. Wine people, uh, culinary people are recognizing craft beer as an amazingly affordable luxury. For two extra dollars, you can get an awesome six pack of world class craft beer. If you upgrade from the shittiest wine, and say, you know what, I'm going to treat myself tonight and spend two more dollars on the bottle. Instead of four dollars, I'm going to spend six. So at any rate, that, that, that life and limb, that family of craft beer moves out in concentric circles from those 1,500 small independent breweries out to the retailers, the distributors, Oak is awesome, our local distributor, and out to the consumers like you guys, because none of us have giant budgets. You know, Sierra Nevada never even bought a ad in a, in a beer mug publication until two years ago. They relied on you guys to get the word out there. They relied on places like Blind Tiger to say, you know, you're not going to come in here and buy my taps. We're going to serve what we want to serve because we know that people want to try this shit from the small little independent breweries. <laughs> Gigantic refrigerated soapbox and drinking with you guys. Thank you for coming out.